Really exciting today. Nobel Prize in Physics. Today, uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics has been awarded to uh, two physics, physicists working in the UK, in Manchester, uh, Andre Geim and Kostya Novozolov. And there are two things that make it really unusual. The first thing is, it's a Nobel Prize that was won with a piece of sellotape, sticky tape. And the other is, it's the first Nobel Prize where I've lost a bet and a cup of tea. Yes, I know Andre Geim very well. In fact, he was a postdoc uh, working here in Nottingham in the uh, early 90s. And uh, I also know Kostya very well. My colleague Mike said that this year's Nobel Prize in chemistry would be for graphene. I said it'd be for physics, but he bet me either way that I would buy him a cup of tea, and I've lost. Well, what, what uh, Andre and Kostya had was the crazy idea of making a transistor structure out of a single atomic sheet. This is graphene. It's a sheet of carbon atoms arranged in hexagons. Now, graphite is the thing that's inside this uh, so-called lead pencil. It's, that, it's not lead in there, it's, it's, it's carbon in the form of, of graphite. Uh, and if we make a mark with a pencil, what we're doing is we're depositing little sheets, atomic sheets of, of carbon on the paper. And one single atomic layer of Graph, graphite is called graphene and this is a, a representation. But it's only one atom thick. You can see a very large sheet but very thin, very flexible. And uh, we can imagine graphite as just being layer and layer of this piled upon one upon another. And so what Andre and Costia did, they essentially took a lump of graphite and then got some scotch tape or sellotape and stuck it on the surface and then peeled off layers of, uh, of carbon, th these atomic layers, not perhaps one single layer, but maybe 10 or 50 of 100. And now I'm going to try and do their experiment here in front of you. Never tried it before. Let's see if it works. It begins with a piece of graphite. It's made up of lots of layers like this, stacked one on top of each other. Thousands of millions in this tiny sample. So what they did was they took a piece of sticky tape. I don't know if it was this brand, but stuff like this. And they put it on the top and pressed it down and just pulled it off. But by repeatedly sticking more uh, sellotape on, they could peel off one atomic layer after another until eventually they could see just one single atomic layer of these carbon atoms, and that was your graphene. I think in this case I've rather overdone it and taken off several sheets. And then what they did is they found another surface and pushed the thing down and peeled off the sellotape and it stuck. Mine hasn't stuck, so I wouldn't get the Nobel Prize for that. I was very happy <laughs> because they, I know them both uh, and they work in Britain, so it's great for Britain and wonderful for them. So uh, I should certainly be raising my glass to them this evening. What really excited physicists and chemists was that for the first time you could have a single sheet where, which was only one atom thick. And so there are bonds that on the atoms which can interact with other things. Normally when they're stacked together, all these bonds are interacting between one layer and another. Here you have a single layer of carbon. And this has opened up a huge range of experiments. What uh, Costia and Andre did in Manchester uh, was to look at the electronic properties of graphene. And uh, they used a well, particular interest, of course. It wasn't just that they discovered the transistor, but they learned a whole lot of uh, new physics, which was really entirely unexpected. I think in this case, it is right that it was the Nobel Prize for physics because the real interest in this material is the way that the electrons behave in these layers. This is definitely a, a Nobel Prize in physics rather than chemistry because uh, the, I, I think it's fair to say I'm not a chemist, but I think the chemistry of, uh, of graphite and graphene are fairly understood. The big surprise was if you uh, make a little transistor out of this, all these interesting prop fundamental physics properties emerge. So I think it's right that they should have got the Nobel Prize for Physics. It's interesting that Rutherford, 
who had also been a scientist at Manchester, got the Nobel Prize for chemistry, and he didn't really respect chemists. He's his own man, so it was immediately an equal partnership. No, he was, uh, had a very strong ideas of science, and it was a great pleasure and privilege working with him. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they both have very, very clear ideas of uh, where they want to go. To, to succeed in that project, it's just remarkable. If you, well, I, I remember when they made the first transistor, and the patience and dedication to try and get that, to, to see this th idea through to a working device was just incredible. And as I've said, they were a pretty small group in Manchester and all these other groups around the world, big groups breathing down their neck. But somehow, Costier and Andre have been able to keep ahead of the, keep ahead of the field. Fantastic.